Hi, my name is Cherish Bazmeyer, and I am an elementary school teacher and a mom of three boys. For the past few years, I've been teaching kindergarten in a local public school here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I enjoy teaching kindergarten because I found that helping young children build a foundation in learning is the key to children's success in the future. Today, I will be letting you take a peek in my family's wacky, wonderful world and share some tips and tricks and frustrations during this COVID-19 pandemic. There's my husband working already, I think. Ooh, good boy, working, working hard. This is our living situation. And my husband just decided that he's not gonna be quite. Good morning! Hi, Colin! Colin, can you say good morning? Colin, say good morning. No. Say good morning, Colin. Colin, good morning. Good morning, my baby. What about her? Good morning. Okay, good morning. 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 Okay, so we don't have meetings this morning, but we have to still have a breakfast, brush our teeth, and then do our work before we can have a break, okay? And then when Daddy is finished, then maybe if it's a good weather, Daddy, we can go outside. But yeah, we can go for a walk. Okay, but so we have to do our, our work. Also, Caleb and Colin has Finding the balance between working and teaching, doing household chores, and assisting my children with distance learning is not an easy mission. We as parents constantly change hats throughout the day and it can be overwhelming. There are days when I feel like I'm a super mom and I can do it all. Well, there are some days where I feel defeated even before my day begins. Today, I'll courageously show snippets of my family's lives from the past three days. But before that, have a look at our weekly schedule. This schedule is for all of my children's and I's distance learning schedule. And if you notice, Mondays and Wednesdays are pretty heavy for virtual meetings, while Thursdays and Fridays is pretty open. 
laying out your children's and your own schedule for you to look at allows you to find time to do everything. So Monday and Wednesday are survival mode and I prep as much as I can for the kids distance learning and my brother-in-law Alan takes over. While Tuesday, Thursdays and Fridays I focus on heavy teaching with the boys and do my work in between and sometimes after office hours. Tips to keep yourself organized. First, write down your distance learning schedule, your children's and also your work schedule. Post it somewhere where everyone can see, like our fridge. This will avoid confusion and allows you to actually set a routine that will work with your family. Setting a routine gives your children predictability and security, which lessens the stress and pressure that they could be feeling. Find a designated space for learning. This helps your children focus at the task at hand. In our case, we use our dining room table, and that's where they do most of their learning. It also becomes the central location for all our le online learning. So it's easier to find their binders or their um, worksheets that they're working on because everything's in the dining room table. Recognize your family's needs. Adjust when necessary. Setting a routine is important but it is more important to have room for flexibility. Be sensitive to everyone's mood, including your own. If the children woke up late, don't sweat it. If meltdowns happens or your child is sick, modify their workload. They can catch up next time. This is no secret, but it seems like only a few people know. None of the distance learning, at least in the elementary school level, will count for final mark. We give distance learning work for our students so that our students can maintain their knowledge and skills that they already have. It's a way for students not to regress. And if even the students regress a little bit, the teachers will meet them where they are when we get back at school. Keep your family healthy. If we as adults feel the stress, the disconnect and uncertainty, imagine our children. Even with my own family, I can only hold up the schedules and routines for so long. The anxiety and stress of our children feels and experience manifest in different ways. My husband, Chris, usually works from home. So he actually finds it cool that I'm at home as well. But I miss my routine. I like having that 10 minute drive to work and back at home. It makes a huge difference in my life, especially for me mentally. This is when I gather my thoughts, re reset, and sometimes just have some peace and quiet. I also miss the social aspect. I miss interacting with my students, their parents, my colleagues. This is my coworker, my ECE, my partner in crime, my teaching partner, Galen, say hello. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Galen. I'm going to just people in general. But most of all, I miss my family. The hardest thing for me was asking my parents and my sister and her family to no longer come over our house. Though I am busy, I felt isolated and I truly miss them. But I had to make a choice because my mom is a nurse and she sometimes works seven days a week. I had to put my children's safety first. And I'm so grateful that my family understands. I find that Colin, my youngest, runs away and hides whenever it's learning time. Two, one, pause please. Come Colin. Let's go. Thank you. Good boy. Finish your puzzle. The alphabet is done. Let's do the transportation and your farm. Left. R. The car. Sometimes I like to break things up, so I have to go fast. Okay, Colin, here, look. Write your name. 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 Write
her name six times. C O say it. C L I runs away to the front door when he hears the doorbell. More than ever, we notice that he wants everyone in the family to always be together. When a door closes or opens, he runs to it. I feel that Collins displays anxiety and maybe even fear of being left at home. Cameron is our middle and only typical child. Though he does not have therapies like the other two, we find that his distance learning workload is very rigorous. He often spends hours working on his school task every day. I find that Cameron is resorting to online games and videos as his comfort. He often rushes his schoolwork so that he can go back to watching. I find that when he spent too much screen time, he had less patience learning and even more less patience with his brothers. And though fight among siblings is typical, it really sets the day for more crying and meltdowns. Last but not least, my firstborn to Caleb. Caleb had improved leaps and bounds since his being diagnosed with autism. I find because my attention is split into four, his frustration builds up. The crying and the meltdowns carries on. And to be completely honest with you, teaching Caleb requires so much focus, energy, and patience. Okay, so survival tips. Prioritize. The basic needs of the kids are more important than school, which are two things, health and safety. Health is spiritually, physically, mind and emotion. And safety is also very important. For us, the biggest safety issues are watching Colin to make sure that he doesn't hurt himself because he likes to climb and jump from high places. He also now discovered hiding in closets. He thinks he thinks it's fun. Also, the other two boys we need to monitor the content of what they're watching online because they're no more technologically savvy. I'm really blessed to have a mother-in-law that can cook and cooks really well, but I can't abuse her kindness. So when it's my turn to cook, I think about my schedule so I can either wake up extra early or compensate working after Chris finished work. Also, I just sometimes just buy cooked food and reheat it. That saves me a lot of time and effort. Plus, with our family situation, my kids are picky eaters. We don't experiment during the week. We feed them what they like so that there's minimal fights. What do you have for breakfast, Cameron? Uh, juice. Okay. To survive and for my children to eat, I compromise. We compensate by making sure we give them vitamins every day. Vitamins. Mm. Thank you. Meltdowns give them a break from academic 
do something together. Like exercise. Play games. make and or have a snack do arts and crafts some experiments take a nap then get back on track Stay connected. My parents drops by before my mom goes to work to say hello to the kids at least once a week out at the front lawn. We also video chat with them so that the kids can share the things that they're doing at home. Hi, Taylor. Hi. 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 And I find sometimes that Lincoln and Cameron plays together via online games. I think it's Roblox or Minecraft or something. We also celebrated virtual birthdays. We had three of the cousins had their birthdays during this pandemic so far. Are you one? That made everybody Are sad because one, they're so two, used to three, five, having the four. cousins together Are you during five? those celebrations. Yeah. Another important thing is spend quality time with your spouse. No, you can't go out on a date, but be creative. Chris and I go grocery shopping together every two weeks. Waiting in long lines allowed us to talk and bond. He also signed us up for a virtual marathon, so we train once a week together. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Finally, we get to walk. Um, so we're going to try for 5K, and then we'll be back. Thank you. <laughs> He's very uh, ambitious, as you can tell. But this is one of the ways that, because you can't go anywhere, you can try to be fit um, with your spouse, and that will also build your relationship better. Kind of like our date but torturing ourselves at the same time. And um, we have a very busy day when we come back. So let's start, get started. Take care. Hello. We discovered a new track. It's nice. I have seen it. We saw dunes already. It's nice. I'm here. 
backwards. So we're gonna go around to another park here on the top side and see how long we last. And just recently, we tried to watch a movie or a show together so that we can talk about it. Last, but definitely not least, and I'm as guilty as anyone. Make time for yourself. Connect with God every day. With my crazy schedule, I use Daily Bread app. It allows me to have quick meditation so that I don't have any excuses not to read the Bible. When I'm in the washroom, I listen to a preaching at least once a day. I also listen to praise and worship songs when I need to distress and before going to sleep. My journey is not perfect. I seriously need to work on my eating habits and push myself to do more exercise. Thank you for spending some time getting to know my family. As you saw a glimpse of our reality, I humbly ask you to please add us to your prayers. And I pray that God will guide you and protect you and bless you with your family through this COVID-19 pandemic. We're in this together. Keep safe and be blessed.